Hey guys, I'm Tom, a tech chap, and if you've just bought yourself a fancy new Fold 3, then here are my top 10 tips to get the most out of it. And even though in my review I said that I prefer to probably stick with my S21 Ultra, there's nothing quite like the Fold 3, and if you use it right, I reckon you might never want to actually go back to a regular old boring phone. And if you do find this video useful, then a cheeky little like and subscribe would be lovely. Okay, number one, and check out Samsung Labs in the advanced feature menu. There's a lot of fun stuff here, and customizing app aspect ratios is an interesting one. For example, Instagram on the fold defaults to 16 by 9, so while you can see this is usable, we are missing a bit on the edges. Now switching it to full screen means that we go from this to this, which fills the whole screen and does look better. However, it's not perfect, and Instagram stories do still get cut off, which is a bit frustrating. So despite this fix, I actually tend to stick uh, with the app default, which is 16 by 9, but depending on the app, this could be useful to play around with. Okay, number two, and while we're in the labs menu, not only would I suggest turning on multi-window so that all apps can be used in split screen, although not all will play nice with it, but it's worth trying, and I'd also go into flex mode panel and enable it for apps that you'd like to have stay on the top half of the screen when you fold it. Now a handful of apps like YouTube and the camera are already pretty well optimized for this, but turning it on with say Zoom or Teams if you're on a video call and you want to use the Fold as a makeshift stand. So definitely take some time exploring the different lab features, but for my third tip, make sure that you have edge panels enabled in the display settings. You can also then tap it if you want to customize the look and what it shows, but this is handy for quick app shortcuts, especially when you drag them over and see the different split screen options. At the bottom here, you can tap the little burger icon to add or remove apps, but the best part is if you set it up how you like, with up to three apps in split view, and even a fourth you can drop in the center as a pop-up floating app that you can then move around and stays on top, but once you've got your setup how you like it, you can then tap the little app dividing line thing in the middle, and you'll then be able to swap the apps around if you want, and crucially save this combination to the edge menu, so then it's just one press to bring it all back up. And this is genuinely really useful if you have a setup you regularly like to use, maybe having Gmail and Calendar side by side, maybe a Notes app and Zoom, or even Discord and a game if you fancy. All right, moving on. And if you're a gamer, remember that you're not just limited to playing mobile apps on the Play Store. Download Xbox Game Pass or GeForce Now, pair a controller over Bluetooth, and play some proper games on your Fold 3's big AMOLED tablet screen. You do need to pay for a subscription of course, and you need a fast, reliable internet connection, but because you are streaming the games, you're essentially getting high-end PC graphics, it doesn't use up much of your battery, and there's also no downloads or updates to deal with. To be fair, most phones can already do this, but the Fold 3's big screen definitely makes it more immersive, and if you do already have an Xbox, then Game Pass makes sense, and it even supports picture-in-picture -picture mode, so you can check your messages and emails without actually leaving the game. Okay, tip number five, and I'm sure you already know this, but a big reason to get the Fold 3 is the S Pen support. And with either the S Pen Fold Edition or the S Pen Pro that gives you Bluetooth support for air actions and using it as a remote shutter for the camera, they both have the fastest 2.8 milliseconds response time, down from 9.2, I believe, on the Note 20. So this really is the best S Pen experience you can get on a Samsung device, so I think it's definitely worth buying one if you can. Tip number six, and because the Fold has two screens, you can set them up a bit differently. So for me, on the cover screen, which I use mostly when I'm out and about, I have all my travel, car, and messaging apps, as well as things like Google Maps, whereas on the first page of the inner screen, I have, well, everything else. And you can also have different wallpapers. Or, if you can't be bothered with any of that and just want your screens to match, if you long press on the home screen, go to settings, and then you can turn on cover screen mirroring so they're exactly the same. Tip seven, and this is just a quick one. I still recommend this trick for all Android phones. And so if you go into about phone, then software info, and then you tap on build number, I think it's seven or eight times to unlock the developer options. In there, scroll right the way down and reduce the animation times to 0.5 times. And I find this just helps everything feel even snappier. Okay, number eight, and if you open up the camera app, 
Don't forget that if you tap this little cover screen preview icon at the top right, well, as it says on the tin, the cover screen then becomes a front facing viewfinder. So if you're taking selfies, you can then use the good quality main cameras and see yourself, which of course includes the ultra wide lens as well, uh, which is great unless you're Billy No Mates like me. Plus, if you're taking a photo of someone else, they can see what they look like, so you don't have to take another million photos. This is definitely not directed at my wife, Sarah. Tip nine, and this is just another quick one, but I'm not the biggest fan of Samsung's keyboard, particularly this default split view when you're using the tablet screen. So for me, I actually jump into the keyboard settings and switch this back to a standard layout, which I find more comfortable, or better yet, for me at least, I would download the Google keyboard, switch to Gboard in the settings, and I just find this much more comfortable to use. Okay, tip number 10, and don't forget that the Fold 3 supports wireless charging, up to 11 watts, I believe, and also reverse charging. So if you tap wireless power share in the drop down menu, then place another phone or device that supports wireless charging on the back, it'll charge up, albeit at a very slow four and a half watts. But in a pinch, it might give someone enough charge to bring their phone back from the dead and so they can maybe get an Uber home after a long night. The Fold 3 really is a tinkerer's and enthusiast device, and there's a ton more to play with, like Samsung's DeX, finding the best apps and then taking advantage of the bigger screen like Lightroom, saving the best split screen combinations. But hopefully this little tip guide was helpful, and if you do have any other good tips, then make sure you share them in the comments for everyone else. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat. I'm the greatest dentist of our century!